It's December of 1976, and the official motion picture, King Kong, releases to a mixed critical reception. But the history of this film is a long and very interesting one. Unknown to audiences, there was a Universal Studios attempt for a King Kong film to be released that very same year called The Legend of King Kong. So, you may be scratching your head, like, wait, there were supposed to be two King Kong films released in the same year? Well, what happened to the other one? Why was it cancelled? Well, sit back, get your bananas, and let's tell the story of the 70s cancelled film, The Legend of King Kong. The plot of this cancelled movie is honestly not really worthwhile to mention since it is pretty similar to the original King Kong film from 1933, even so that the film is set in 1933. But if you've never heard of the original plot of King Kong, here's a basic rundown. Director finds Anne, Skull Island, Fight, Empire State Building, and Kong eventually falls at his death. Yo, know, most people already know the plot to the original King Kong, which is pretty much how it goes in the script. The main differences in this remake are mainly in the characters, creatures, places, ships, and of course, mainly just cosmetic changes, which we will go into. The reason behind these changes were actually more of a legal reason instead of a creative reason. Universal had to change things due to RKO, the owners of the original 1933 film owning the original copyright. So Universal had to switch up a few things with the story, characters, and the creatures in the film. Here are some of the things that the Legend of King Kong would have featured, unlike the original 1933 film. For one, Carl Dunham, rumored to be played by Peter Falk, while being a greedy person in the original film, still cared about his crew at the end of the day. In this film, he's much more of a straight-up villain, only caring about money and even going so far as filming Kong on the Empire State Building before being striked off, being much more of a sinister villain in this version, unlike the original. Universal also was looking at other actresses and actors to play the rumored parts in the film. Susan Blakely was looked at to play the role of Anne, while Jack was being looked at for Nick Nolte or Robert Redford. Other changes in the story also include names and other minor differences. For example, the Venture, which was the ship in the original 1933 film, was renamed to the Panama Queen to avoid copyright issues. Also, the native village where Kong attacks and the natives have a different design and also aesthetic compared to the original film. The biggest change compared to the original film in this script, at least, is mainly through the creatures that would have featured in the film. Many were changed from scene to scene, while others were just straight up added to the script as brand new creatures never before seen in the original film. This was done for many reasons for copyright issues, but also to stand this film out from the original a little bit more. One example of this new changes was the famous Kong vs. the T-Rex fight that we all know in the original film and the recent 2005 film, but this was changed due to the copyright issues from RKO's film, so the decision was for Kong at the end of the day to fight a giant Triceratops, or according to the concept art, a Triclonus? Another major creature change in the film was actually the Stegosaurus, which was going to be replaced by a kick-ass prehistoric rhino called the Asterisk Theorem, I believe that's how it pronounces. Dinosaur names are very confusing. Which honestly, this thing looks freaking amazing, it looks kick ass in my opinion. Another major change in the film was the Bronchiosaurus scene, which was not going to feature any Bronchiosauruses, but instead it was going to be replaced by a giant reptilian amphibian type creature, which looks very interesting. The film would have also featured a cutscene from the original film, which was later added in that weird-ass bug sequence from the 2005 film that I don't think nobody wants to remember. Concept art for this, this scene also includes a reptilian eel, and also a weird centipede creature. And then for Kong's design, he was much more closer to the 1933 original film than what was being made for the 1976 film, with being a little more smaller in scale and featuring more monkey traits. There's also many sketches for this thing done with the weird half-human Kong, which, yeah, let's, let's not talk about that. The film even reached so far with Kong with even doing costume tests for the original King Kong prototype. But then again, what happened to this film, knowing that it was cancelled? Well, the reason behind the legend of King Kong's cancellation is a long and really crazy story to honestly tell, so this one you really need to sit back and hear. It started in the 1970s when Universal became interested in doing a remake of King Kong due to Kong's recent surge of popularity. Universal approached RKO for the rights to do the film, offering 5% of the film's profits to them. Feeling confident they received the verbal approval, keyword from RKO, they moved forward with their remake. Unknown to them, Paramount and and Dino DeLinteris, the producer of that film, had already signed a contract deal to make the remake for the release of 1976 with RKO. Finding out about this, Universal Studios sued both Paramount and RKO for the rights in a huge class action lawsuit for the rights of King Kong. What ensued
ensued was a legendary legal battle of two studios over two different Kongs. Universal claimed that they had the previous oral agreement, but RKO denied such a deal, and Paramount already had the signed contract and ink. During this hot mess, Universal Studios, not wanting to lose the battle over their remake, actually found a legal loophole when it came to the rights of King Kong. You see, the novelization of the 1933 film's book adaptation, copyright, had actually lapsed into the public domain, since the original offer passed away too quickly to register it back to RKO. So, technically, Anybody can make an adaptation and profit off it. Seeing this as their trap card, Universal quickly announced that The Legend of King Kong would be based on the 1933 novelization of the film. Giving them the legal grounds to actually push forward with their remake, Universal quickly announced that the filming of The Legend of King Kong would actually begin on January 5th of 1976. Universal hoped that this would scare Paramount and Dino to give up their King Kong film, which actually didn't work since it only forced Dino to film his version sooner and kind of rush it out quicker. While fast-tracking production, Universal even hired a screenwriter, Bo Goldman, who wrote films like Who Flew Over the Cuckoo Nest and so on, to write the screenplay for the film, and they also hired Joseph Sargent to direct the feature. To do the special effects for The Legend of King Kong, they hired Jim Danforth, known for his famous stop-motion animations. The approach for Kong and the other creatures in the film was the idea they were going to do stop-motion like the original 1933 film, but with the new and improved camera technology developing in the 70s. But Universal Studios considered this approach too expensive, so they decided the cheaper option of doing men in monster suits. This also includes King Kong, which was going to be done with a man in a suit with facial prosthetics also, like the Planet of the Apes movies. They even got as far as screen testing a King Kong prototype suit with the actor Bob Burns inside the suit for screen test. And even though there were many successes along the way, there were also many problems with the visual effects and the film as a whole as it went down. Many of the effects were starting to feel rushed, and there was no time to actually do them right. One Universal Special Effects advisor said, quote of the movie, Why did I quit my retirement to do this shit? Ouch. Even with all these hiccups in the production of the actual film, there are also many other overarching legal issues that would eventually cause the film's downfall and lead to the ultimate cancellation on why The Legend of King Kong was cancelled. After the original lawsuit, Paramount and Dino decided to countersuit Universal again for the right to make their version of King Kong instead of theirs for $90 million. Even the producer Dino DeLinters, even in disrespect, published an advert, quote, saying, There is still only one King Kong, end quote, and claiming that his picture was going to be more exciting than the Universal one. As it became clear to Universal that Paramount and Dino weren't backing down from the situation, and the fact that the legal issues were starting to pile up, Universal had to make a giant decision. Whether to release the film and face huge potential failure and more legal issues, or eventually come to some kind of settlement between the partners involved. Universal still tried on and attempted to persuade Paramount and Dino to sort of make a collaboration picture with all partners involved, but the catch was they were going to use their script for the whole big picture. Paramount and Dino quickly denied this deal, even Dino pushing it so far that he filed another massive lawsuit against Universal over the issue. If the craziness couldn't get any crazier, Paramount seeing that Dino had filed another lawsuit against Universal threatened Dino that if he did not drop the lawsuit, he, they would pull back from his own film. Dino having no choice and being threatened by Paramount ultimately dropped the lawsuit against Universal. Since Paramount and Universal were still good partners in the business of movie making and didn't want any further bad blood over this whole situation. Finally, to end this whole legal battle, in 1976, a federal judge ruled that Paramount and Dino had indeed the rights to make a King Kong film, and that Universal didn't, and that they would move forward with their picture and Universal couldn't. But it didn't mean that Universal could never move forward with a King Kong film at all, since in the ruling it stated that 24 months after the release of the 1976 film, Universal could then secure the rights and make their own version of King Kong. This whole situation would ultimately be why The Legend of King Kong was never made. But it didn't necessarily mean that Universal would never make another King Kong, as they may have lost the battle, but the war for the remake would eventually rage on. Despite the huge legal mess this film is surrounded by, and the other issues that were plaguing the production of The Legend of King Kong, the film's cancellation was a result of a huge legal battle out of the hands of the people who were making it, which is honestly a tragedy, since it wasn't their fault the film was cancelled. So what are my thoughts on the mess that is The Legend of King Kong? 
Well, to be honest with you, I think the film would have been very interesting to see if it was ever made. I would have honestly loved to see two King Kong films be made around the same time, as weird as that sounds. Though, history has not been keen to two films being released around the same year, but it would have been interesting just to see what would have happened if the two were ever released together. I think the cast would have been interesting to see in this film, and also Kong and the new creatures would have been awesome to see if it was ever made. Also, to see what they would have done with the special effects and see how they would have done it back in the 70s would have been very interesting to wonder. It is overall very interesting to wonder what if this film was ever made. But regardless, The Legend of King Kong makes for a great what if story. So that's The Legend of King Kong.